1995 album, Balance. And ooh, we got some good stuff here. We got some good stuff. So, what do we have? Well, Dave and I are going to do a real deep dive into the Balance album in total. We get deep into the album and all the intricacies about it and all the little deets. And then we talk to Mike Frazier, who was the mixer on the album. And we are also doing an interview with the gentleman who did the cover art for Balance, Glenn Wexler. Everything's going to be a nice balance package. So it's going to be all balance, all Van Hagar era this time out. We got some really good stuff there. So we're excited about that. But before we do that, Dave, we got massive mailbag. So that is coming your way next. Take a listen. My enthusiasm for this kind of thing goes way beyond my abilities. And I don't think it's so much that I do so much. It's that... You- you get very used to a lot of uh, performers in any kind of music joining the Elvis fan club, you know. <laughs> you don't want to end up like Elvis and die face down poisoned by a banana split, you know. If you need a dose of VH, get a taste of the closest thing. Romeo Delight, the ultimate Van Halen tribute band, playing all the hits from the David Lee Roth era, the first classic six albums plus deep cuts, some of which have never been played live before by the band. They even throw in popular tracks from the Sammy Hagar era and solo hits. The most viewed Van Halen tribute band on YouTube, Romeo Delight. Doing customized recreations of staging instruments and costumes from the classic Van Halen era. They even perform entire Van Halen albums in sequence. Romeo Delight plays theaters, casinos, summer indoor and outdoor festivals, and special events. They're also available for private parties. To contact them, call Bud Blanche at 215-704-5144. That's 215-704-5144. Or via email at sonicparade1 at yahoo.com. Romeo Delight, the ultimate Van Halen tribute band. Hey, everybody. This is Robert Romanus, a.k.a. Mike DeMone from Fast Times of Ridgemont High. And you're listening to the Dave and Dave Unchained podcast. Oh, and by the way, I do have some Van Halen tickets for sale if you're interested. Check out the new podcast, The Rock Quarry, your place to hear in-depth interviews with some of Rock's most colorful characters with your host, entertainment journalist, David J. Crible. The Rock Quarry is available for free on Spreaker and iTunes. You can check us out on Facebook at The Rock Quarry Podcast, on Twitter at Rock Quarry Pod, on Instagram at The Rock Quarry Podcast, or email us at The Rock Quarry Podcast at gmail.com. A lot of what Los Angeles is is, honey, baby, sweetie, doll, you look amazing. The hell I do. I haven't been to sleep since 1979. All right, Dave, you know what time it is. Hello? I'm trying. Yeah, no, I'm trying to think of something creative, and my mind drew a blank. I got all this time on my hands, and I can't come up with a creative intro to wow. the mailbag. That is disappointing. I know. I had a whole month to think about it, and I got I got nothing. <laughs> I'm gonna step in there. I'm gonna step here and do it. Ready? Yeah, go for it. <laughs> Welcome to the mailbag. Bring it on. All right, there you go. All right. That's right, it's mailbag time again. And our first letter comes from Aaron of Appleton. He says, Dear Dave and Dave, I'm a longtime listener, first time caller, or should I say emailer. Thank you for keeping the Van Halen flag flying high. This year marks the 25th anniversary of the Balance album. While 5150 was always my favorite Van Hagar album due to the time of my life it was released, repeated listings have led me to believe that the Balance album is arguably the best album they did with Sammy. I realize that's a minority opinion, but damn it, I'm throwing down the gauntlet. Eddie's guitar playing is lean and mean, unlike Unfuck, where four to five of the songs are overstuffed. Not Enough is their best power ballad, and Sammy is actually trying lyrically, well, except for Wham Bam Amsterdam. If you replace the three instrumentals with the bonus track crossing over, then Balance would be regarded as a classic that it is. Do you agree? Like the Mike Myers as Linda Richmond character used to say on Saturday Night Live, 
discuss amongst yourselves. Sincerely, Aaron of Appleton. Well, Aaron, this is a perfect letter to be sending in for this episode because we are focusing on balance. Do I think it's their best album with Sammy? No, I don't. But I do think it's their best sounding album and the best produced, for sure. Not enough their best power ballad. No, I would disagree with that. I mean, look, you're entitled to your opinion. That's fine. I prefer Love Walks In to uh, Not Enough. Replacing the three instrumentals with Crossing Over. Well, I love that idea with the exception of I Am Not Giving Up Baluka Ethereum. No effing way. I love Baluka Ethereum. You can have doing time. You can have strung out for sure. But Baluk Ethereum, I love that song. But I do agree that Crossing Over should be on the album and would really make it a full and better album. Now, Ed's guitar work is overlooked on this album. I will tell you that. There's some real masterful stuff here. We're going to get into all the details on it later on. But what do you think, Dave? I think the album is underrated after we had listened to it and analyzed it, which is coming up. I do agree with you about which instrumental should be off and how Crossing Over should be on. That right. song is criminally underrated. Right. I myself, I mean, I think Sam's best album, I alternate sometimes. I usually go with 5150. Right. Sometimes I go with for un- unlawful carnal knowledge. Right. I think Balance just has one too many weak spots for it to be their best. But hey, you're entitled to your opinion. And like I said, it's definitely underrated. And it does have some high points in it that are worth listening to, which we're going to get to in a little while. Absolutely. Letter number two comes from Tom Jones of Gilbert, Arizona. It's not so unusual to be Tom Jones in Gilbert, Arizona. (laughs) So, dear Dave and Dave, if you won a contest and the prize was Van Halen could play a backyard concert for you and your friends, and you got to pick two five-song set lists, which songs would you pick? Here's my list. Number one, Cradle Will Rock. Number two, Everybody Wants Them. Number three, Hear About It Later. Number four, Stay Frosty with Wolfie. Number five, Hot for Teacher. Then he'd have a beer-soaked intermission, followed by number one, Summer Nights. Number two, Black and Blue. Number three, AFU. Number four, Cabo Wabo. Number five, Man on a Mission. Tom Jones of Gilbert, Arizona. Well, Tom, it looks like we are going into another episode of What If? Now it's time for What If with Dave and Dave. Shit, what if? What if? Dave Marconi's favorite segment, What If? What if, motherfucker? I don't do what ifs. All right, Tom. Well, I am going to entertain your little fantasy here. My set would look like this. Set number, first of all, we go all original Van Halen. That's for sure. Dave, Mike, Ed, and Al. Okay. Set number one starts with Light Up the Sky, followed by Feel Your Love Tonight, Romeo Delight, I'm the One, and DOA. Set number two opens with Unchained, he moves right into the full bug, followed by Top Jimmy, Sinner Swing, and we close out with Drop Dead Legs. What about you, Dave? They're playing in my backyard. They're doing fair warning from beginning to end. (laughs) Woo-hoo-hoo-hoo! What a good Side choice. one, take a break, then side two. Wow. Bam. You'd have to throw in secrets there for an encore. <laughs> okay, that's true. I'll give you well, that. You, actually, yeah. I think you could get away with it because I don't think Fair Warning is ten songs. I think it's nine. I think it's nine. So you might be able to get away with that, throw in secrets there, and you got a uh, nice power-packed evening. Very right, nice. there you go. Well, there you go. That's all, folks. Letter number three goes to Southeast Nice Guy Kurt Lancios, and he says, Dear Dave and Dave, happy February, guys. I wanted to let you know that I was a guest co-host on the most recent episode of the Ridiculous Rock Record Reviews podcast, started by Aaron Martell. And on this episode, Aaron, Chris Cordes, and myself discussed the 1984 Sammy Hagar album, VOA. Here's the link to check it out. Have you ever, too, considered discussing any of Sammy? 
Sammy Hagar solo material like VOA. Also, on the last episode, you mentioned of how great a guitar player Sammy is and how in recent years he has opted to let someone else play guitar for him most of the time. I agree that Sammy is very underrated. Check out his solo on Heavy Metal. He says, keep up the good work. As always, your pal, Southeast, nice guy, Kurt Lancios. Well, I think we will at some point get to some Sammy solo stuff. We have to figure out in what format and how we're going to do it. We have done some already. However, it all depends on, you know, what we get to and it'll happen at some point in the future. Do we think Sammy Hagar is highly underrated as a guitarist? Absolutely. We talk about that all the time. It was definitely a mistake not to use him more. Obviously, everybody wants to hear Ed play guitar, but there are areas where Sammy could have come in and it really would have opened up the dynamic of the band. What about you, Dave? Yes, Sam is criminally underrated as a guitarist, including by himself. Right. He definitely undercuts himself and underrates himself a lot. And yeah, I don't want to hear Van Halen without Ed playing, of course. Of course. But you could have totally had some dual stuff going on, Sam doing rhythm or anything like that. So, yeah, if you've ever listened to the podcast, we've always been a big proponent of Sam's playing. Sure. As far as rating his albums, I mean, we've done that before. We did his Never Say Goodbye album. Mm-hmm. Uh, the problem with a lot of Sam's albums, though, to be honest, is yeah. he'll have, like, maybe three or four decent songs. Right, right. That's and then the move. rest are like, yeah, Meh. Yeah, I know. You know? And, and I really think his 1984 album, VOA, is one of those albums. Right. I mean, you've got right. I Can't Drive 55 on it. Right. There's a few other songs. Two Sides of Love. There you go. That's a good one. Yeah, and then Sam one. usually has a hidden gem, but yeah. I, I don't know. I, his albums are really touch or go or, or hit or miss. Yeah, that's so true. So that's my uh, yeah. really only hesitation yeah. of doing uh, whole albums by Sam. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I definitely have an idea of, of how to do it. We'll probably do something. It won't be just a flat album. There'll be some sort of fun theme to it. But in terms of VOA, I like, obviously, you Can't Try 55. I love Two Sides of Love. I think that song is fantastic. I'm also a big fan of the song Dick in the Dirt, which I love. I love that song. And then VOA is sort of funny because... It's like a really over-the-top Stallone movie, you know what I mean? Like, it's like so charged up against the Russians and this and that. Yeah, it's kind of funny, and it's a whole Sammy Hagar, you know, we don't like it, we can't make it stop, let it rock. I mean, there's so, so many funny things on there. Yeah, it's fun, you know, it, but, you know, that's cool. We'll, we'll get to some stuff at some point. Just to tack on one more thing. Yeah. It, it yeah. is one of his better album covers to VOA. Oh, yeah. I always la- yeah. I always laugh yeah. when I see it. Oh, I mean, my it's God. So oh, You're right. Talk, it's over the top. It's talk over- about Photoshopping. Oh, yeah, before there was Photoshopping. Yeah. Exactly. Absolutely. Exactly. Absolutely. Absolutely. Letter number four comes from Minnesota Mark Vadnas. Vadnais. Something like that. So uh, he says, what I want to know is if Bertinelli, but I think he means Wolf, for example, wrote all the music and lyrics by himself. The press release for Explorer One Music Group says that he recorded all the instruments and vocals himself. I think he had massive help from Pops and other outside contributors. Great podcast. So, no, I totally disagree with you, Mark. I don't think Eddie's playing on the album. I don't think Eddie wrote anything on the album. And I think that Wolf did it all by himself. He's totally capable of doing so. So what do you think, Dave? Yeah, I think this is a solo album. Oh, yeah. In every intent of the word, aside from the production, which was done by Elvis, what's his name? Biscuit. Thank you, Elvis Biscuit. I was going to say Elvis Duran, but that's a (laughs) that's a radio DJ. He is. Elvis Duran's a big Elvis, actually. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right. Right. So I really think uh, I'm not going to sell Wolf short on. On this one, I really think he did practically everything on the album, and I'm looking forward to hearing it. Absolutely. Hopefully, it'll be this year. And letter number five is a tiny short one, but I, he got right to the point. Steve Kennett says, Michael McDonald helped write I'll Wait. Now, what he's referring to is one of our best moves is from the last podcast is that Van Halen never used outside writers. And he said, Michael McDonald helped write I'll Wait. But that is not what I'm talking about. Yeah, I understand Michael McDonald got a credit on I'll Wait because I he helped like a little bit there. But that was sort of a freak thing. I'm talking about bringing in outside writers who are, like, helping make an album. Like, the Michael McDonald thing, 
I have still have to get the backstory on that. But he sort of like did like a couple of things to fix the song. He obviously is friends with Ted Templeman because he produced the Doobie Brothers. But it wasn't like they hired an outside writer to come in to help them write a song. That that was sort of a freak thing where that happened. But I'm talking about like like a Desmond Child guy. 